Hello and welcome. In this lesson, we're going to take a brief look at data structures in R. Understanding data structures is going to be important for manipulating and analyzing your data. We're going to look at vectors, and then we're going to look at how to combine vectors into data frames. And finally, we'll take a brief look at tibbles. So let's go ahead and get started. So here are the learning objectives for this lesson. If you like, you can pause the video and read through these, but we're going to come back to them at the end of the lesson. So now let's go ahead and look at creating vectors. So in order to create a vector, the function you have to learn is the C function. C followed by parentheses creates a vector. So we could create a vector with three numbers, one, two, three. And if we run that, you see it gets printed here, one, two, three in the console. We can assign that to an object like a my vec okay and now we have this object my vec which is a vector of the numbers one two three nice and simple let's look at a more practical example i'm going to create four vectors now so type along with me i'll create one called h and i'll just put some random ages in there 18 maybe 25 and maybe a 46 okay then i'll create another one called sex and i'll put in some sexes and i'll put those in quotes just so that r recognizes those as characters so we have male female and female Okay, create those. Then I'm going to create another one called positive test. And these is going, this is going to be a, a Boolean or logical uh, vector. So I'll put maybe true, true, uh, comma, false. Okay. And finally, I'll create a sequence of IDs, a vector of IDs. Okay. And instead of C123, which I could do for this uh, vector, I'm going to do 1 colon 3. And that is a way of creating the sequence 1, 2, 3, as you can see there in the console. If I put 1 to 100, it'll create 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 100, okay? So what I've done here now is I've created four vectors, and these vectors pertain to three particular people, three theoretical patients. And later we're going to see how to combine these into a data frame. For now, let's see how we can check the classes of these vectors. I can do class H, okay? And I can see that's a numeric vector. I can do the same thing for sex. And I can see that's a character. Positive test, of course, is a logical. And ID should also be a numeric. Another thing I can do is I can check whether these indeed are vectors. There is a simple function in R called is.vector. And we can check to verify that these are vectors. It says age is indeed a vector. And it'll say the same thing for the other three. Now some very quick practice for you here. I tried to define uh, two vectors, okay? But there are mistakes in each of these. There's a mistake in the def definition of each of these. So try to find those and fix them. Now let's briefly look at manipulating vectors, manipulating vectors, okay? So just as you can run a function on a single value, you can also run it on a vector. And I think this is something you know. For example, I could take this vector of ages here, the 182546, and multiply that by two, and each element in that vector gets multiplied by two, 18 times two, 25 times two, and 46 times two. I can also do something like take the square root of a vector. So square root of age, and here is the square root of each of those values. I can also do something like add two vectors together. So for example, we can take this age vector and this ID vector here, okay, which is just one, two, three, and we can sum them. And what happens here is 18 gets summed with one to give you 19, 25 with two to give you 27, and 46 with three to give you 49. That's a very quick crash course on manipulating vectors. Now let's look at combining vectors into data frames. So from vectors from vectors to data frames. So we can combine multiple vectors into a single data frame with the following function data dot frame. Okay, and now I'm going to put the names of these are four vectors that I defined over there, age, comma, sex, comma, a positive test, whoops, positive test, and finally, ID, but in fact, maybe the ID of vector should be in front. So I'll put that there. Now let's let's see what happens when I run this. So as you can see now, it creates a kind of a small spreadsheet, a little data table, a little data frame. And we can assign this to a named object. I'm going to call this something like maybe data underscore epi. Okay, so now I have this object data epi. Let's just print it one more time.
Now, typically, you're not going to be creating data like this inside of R. You're going to be importing data into R and working with that external data. But sometimes it's useful to create these small data sets for demonstration or for other uses, which you will see eventually. For now, let's look at now how to extract the vector out of the data frame. So as I think you already know, you can take this object data epi, put a dollar sign after it, and that way we can ex extract any of these vectors. Let's go and extract age, all right? And we can see that this is that vector there. Now here's a little bit of practice for you with the vector and data frame stuff. So I would like for you to combine the following vectors defined here into a data frame with the following column names. So name for the character vector, that's this one. Number of children for the numeric vector, this one, and is married for the logical vector. So create a data frame with these three vectors. Now here is a second practice question for you. I would like for you to define a data frame in R that resembles the following table with a room and number of windows as two columns and these values within those columns. So go ahead, pause and try that. Now, something that I forgot to mention is that you can actually define a data frame directly without first defining the vectors that go into that data frame. What do I mean by that? Let's look at an example. So here we have data frame ID comma age. Okay. And that defines this data frame with these two columns or these two vectors. Instead of doing that, where you predefine ID and age, you could define them directly within the data frame function. So to do that, we're going to say data frame ID equals, and you can give a series of IDs, let's say maybe four to seven. Okay. And age equals, we can give a series of ages, maybe 50, 56 and 57. Okay. And that way, uh, whoops, here's a small error. So we have a differing number of rows. This is worth it to um, ponder on. So four to seven is actually four values, four, five, six, seven. Sorry about that. So let's use four to six instead. A data frame must always have the same number of rows in R or the, otherwise uh, you get an error. Let's do that again. So now we can see that we defined um, this data frame here directly inside of the function. So we didn't predefine these uh, like we had done in the first example. Now we're going to look at what are called uh, tibbles, tibbles. Okay. A tibble is a special kind of table. It's an alternative to a data frame in R that has slightly better behaviors in important respects. Let's look at an example. So here is data epi that we had defined before. Okay. This is a, just a, a standard data frame. We can convert this to a tibble using the as underscore tibble function. And notice this comes from tidy R tidy R is part of the tidyverse. So once you load the tidyverse, you should have as tibble. Okay. In fact, let's go ahead and do that just to make sure. Okay. So pacman p load, I had loaded this before, but let's go ahead and do that for you. Okay. Pacman p load tidyverse run that. And that way you can make sure you have as tibble. Okay. So as tibble data underscore epi. And now let's see the differences between uh, our original data epi and this tibble. The first thing you may notice is that with the tibble, we have the number of rows three and the number of columns are given at the top of the tibble. Whereas with the standard data frame, it doesn't tell you the number of rows or columns. Okay. The second thing you may notice is that here with the tibble, it gives you the data types for each of the columns. Here you have integer, here you have a double, here you have a, a character and finally a logical there. So there's another thing is that when there is an overflow of um, the columns, the table will abbreviate the columns and put them at the bottom there to show you that I'm going to shrink my console here and I'm going to print just the data epi. So let's print just data epi. And as you can see, because of the overflow, it looks quite ugly. It's hard to make uh, out of the structure of the table, but when you convert it to a table, in fact, let's uh, define this object and let's call it um, a table epi. Okay. When we convert it to a tibble and we print that, you can see that it helps us. It avoids this problem of overflowing by just abbreviating the variable there. The better printing behavior of tibbles becomes more useful the larger your data frame is. So there's this data frame in R called uh, Infert. It's a built in data frame. Let's go ahead and try to print that. I'll expand my console a bit. Okay. If I try to print Infert, it's quite a large data frame. And if I just print it, it's kind of hard to see what exactly it is. You kind of have to scroll all the way to the top. And then we can see, okay, here the columns are education, age, parity, induced. And if you scroll down case, spontaneous stratum and so on, it doesn't print very nicely. However, if we convert this to a tibble, 
by just doing as tibble invert. Now it it's a shrinks it into a more manageable format. I can see uh, just 10 rows. So it prints just the first 10 rows. I can see these four columns. So I don't have to do lots of scrolling to get to it. And for the other column slash variables that I can't see, it just gives me the names here. Okay. And so if I wanted, I could easily just pull those out directly. Now, the very last thing I'll mention is that the read underscore CSV function creates tibbles. So if you remember when we taught you how to import data, we saw that there were two main functions for reading in CSVs. And that was read dot CSV, which comes from the base R, which is built into R. And then we had read underscore CSV, which comes when you load the tidyverse package. It comes from the read R package, which is part of the tidyverse um, meta package. Now let's go ahead and try to read in a data frame with each of these. So I'm going to read in uh, this thing that we had, we've used before. Okay, tinyurl.com slash Ebola data sample. Sorry that you have to um, <laughs> type out this full thing. So go ahead, pause and type that out. Okay. And I'll call this, um, I'll call this uh, data one, then I'm going to do another import, I'll call that data two. And this time I'm using the read underscore CSV function. Again, I will just import the same data set, but this time to a different object. So now let's go ahead and print these. If I print data one here, you can see it prints as a standard data frame. And it's uh, quite messy, it's kind of hard to see the column names and so on. Okay. But now if I print data two, that prints as a table because I used read underscore CSV. And this is much more easy to manage and to understand what is going on with this data set. Of course, if you want to view the whole data set, you can always type view with a capital V and view the whole thing in your uh, data viewer. So now let's quickly go through our learning objectives. The hope is that by now you can create vectors using the C function. You know how to combine those vectors into a data frame and you understand the difference between a tibble and a standard data frame in R. So with this brief overview of data classes and data structures in R, you are now ready to begin the full fledged process of data analysis and data transformation. Congrats on making it this far in the course. You should feel proud of yourself and of the progress you have made and good luck in the next stages. Bye-bye.